Have you ever wanted to configure a virtual machine in Parallels running on your Mac for specific purposes? Maybe you want to run a Windows machine for productivity. Maybe you want to run a Linux machine for software development. Maybe you want to run a Mac machine in a Mac machine in order to do testing or to create educational videos. There are many different configuration options that allow us to optimize our virtual machine easily so that it works to, the exact, to do exactly what we'd like it to do. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can work with the configuration options in Parallels to customize our virtual machine for our specific needs. So here I have a Windows 11 machine running in Parallels. This is a machine that was created using the wizard. So I just used the wizard very quickly, had a Windows 11 machine created for me, and it's going to be perfect for most use cases. But let's say I have a unique or specific use case. What I can do is in the top right corner, I can go into the configuration settings through the gear icon, or I can use the action menu and go into configure. You'll notice that I have the option of making changes to the Windows environment, for example, this machine is designed for productivity and I can change things like uh, the different optimization, the maintenance, the, how I'm going to use full screen applications and such. I can change the hardware settings in terms of the type of CPU and amount of memory I use. We'll go through some of these settings, but you'll also notice at the top here that some of these settings cannot be changed until the machine is turned off. Just like a real computer, there are certain things we cannot do if we have the machine running. We have to turn the machine off in order to make those changes. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go into my Windows machine and I'm going to shut down the Windows virtual machine. Then I'll be on my Mac and I'll be able to go into my control center for the virtual machine in order to uh, make changes. So you can see here I have my, my Parallels control center. In this machine, I only have one virtual machine at the moment, and I have my configuration for that virtual machine. If you don't have the configuration window open, you can use the gear icon, and you can use that to get to the configuration option. Notice here that now this machine is configured for productivity, but I don't receive that warning. I can now make all the changes I want. So if I go into the productivity, Maybe I'd rather use this machine for something like software development. I'd like to work with databases, integrated development environments, different emulators and such. Maybe I want to use it for software testing to create a nice isolated environment so that when I'm building applications, I can test them on a Windows machine without worrying about it relying on services from outside of that Windows machine. I could use it for design. Maybe I want to put AutoCAD or uh, computer-aided design software on here, different graphics editing programs. This will configure the settings of the virtual machine for those types of programs that are more graphic intense. And of course, I could make it a gaming rig. So I could go in and just use it for games, full screen gaming, and I could use that for different um, games that have a lot of demands on the resources of my system. I might just keep it on productivity, but maybe I still want to make a few tweaks. So I can go in here and I can change the entire focus of the machine, in which case it'll automatically adjust settings, or if I'd like, I can adjust those settings myself manually. So I can go to the options of the machine. You can see I have lots of different options in terms of how I'd like the machine to behave. I won't go through every single option here in this video. That would take quite some time, but you can see here underneath optimization, I can set resource limits. So let's say I'm running multiple virtual machines and I have some that I just want to use for testing, but I don't want them to consume all of the resources of my Mac. I could limit how much I'm allowing them to use. I could go in and modify how I'm going to share. It's a very powerful thing with a virtual machine that I can take something that I create on my Mac and just drag it into Windows and also the other way around. So it makes it very useful if I have one application that I'm using to maybe create a video effect and then I bring that into another system. So maybe from Windows I create the window video effect and then I bring it over to my Mac where I use it in, in editing software or the other way around again. I can choose the applications that I'm going to share between Mac and Windows and so on with many other different options. What I really like to do is I like to modify the way my virtual hardware behaves. So for example, 
I could have things where when I boot my virtual machine, the first device it looks for is the virtual hard drive where Windows is installed, but I can change this boot order. So for example, I could have a virtual machine that's emulating a Windows environment or a PC-based environment, but I could have it boot off an external device such as a USB key. So let's say I wanted to install an operating system on a USB key. I could create a virtual machine in parallels to boot off of that key. So right within my Mac, I can have a, for example, USB driven Linux installation and so on. I can change the boot order in here. If you're interested in seeing how to create a USB based virtual machine, let me know and I'll make a video on that as well. I can go and choose specific external boot devices and there's always going to be an advanced menu where I can do things like adjust boot flags. This is just boot order that I'm looking at here. You can see that I can adjust my CPU and memory. So if I have specific uh, CPU and memory needs for my Windows machine or if I want to only share a portion of my Mac with my Windows machine. By default, Parallels is going to do a very good job of automatically adjusting my CPU and memory resources. But if I'd like, I can manually go in and I can make changes in terms of how many processors I want to use, uh, what memory I'd like to use. It is important to note that you can't exceed the physical limitations of your Mac, but I'll normally keep this at the automatic setting for many of my environments. But there are cases where I want to, for example, create a very limited Linux machine just to see if I can run something on, on lower end hardware. I can go in and modify graphics, which is quite popular. So I can do things if I have a retina display, I can use that. That would be more if I was using an iMac or if I had a MacBook. I'm using a Mac mini myself, so I have it set up for external displays because I have a big 4K monitor and a not so 4K monitor that I use. So I allow Windows to manage those two monitors. I can also use scaling if I have some legacy apps in there. Um, again, I can go in. One of the areas that's very important is the hard drive. You'll notice here that my hard drive, my virtual hard drive here is on, on, on my hard drive that's in my Mac. I can actually take this hard drive file, this HDD file, and I can move that. And if you're interested, I can show you, I can create another video on Parallels where I show you how I manage many, many virtual machines. I don't have enough room on my one Mac to have them all on that Mac at the same time. So I actually will move virtual machines that I'm not using either to an external hard drive or I'll move them into the cloud and then I'll bring them back to my Mac when I need to work with that specific machine. So there's a lot of portability when it comes to virtual machines and virtual hard drives. As we go through, you can see that this configuration option gives me a lot of different ways to customize my environment exactly the way I need it to be for specific needs. I can do things such as encryption, I can set backup, but really I spend most of my time configuring hardware resources and I'll spend time with some of the options around how I interact between the Mac and a Windows machine, for example. When it comes to Linux, I tend to really spend most of my time really adjusting these settings here to get the Linux machine to behave exactly like I want it to. So a lot of times with a virtual machine, we'll use the wizard, we'll create a Windows machine, install the apps that we want to install in there, and that's just a perfect use case. But there are many, many things I can do to configure unique machines that allow me to be very specific in the way that I'm using them. It really opens up a whole laboratory of computers that I can use by using parallels in this way. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.